So magnetic materials are those in which one second I have to start recording you may require later. Okay. So magnetic materials are those in which we can induce some sort of magnetization and when magnetization we would see later uh, depending upon the nature of the material it may induce some sort or it may create some sort of magnetic field in the surrounding space the behavior of the magnetic field induced or created by the magnetic material once magnetized that may be different depending upon the nature of the magnetic material okay so the behavior of the magnetic material whatever this is usually due to the dipole moments inside the magnetic material which is a structural or i would say the basic element inside the inside the material the dipole moments of the magnetic material or any uh, in any material that comes from the electrons orbiting around the nucleus if we consider the orbit concept now uh, as the electrons are orbiting, so there is a movement of the charge, so we can consider them as current and they are circulating around the nucleus. So in most cases, the MMF due to these individual electrons which are orbiting the nucleus, they cancel each other. However, once cancelled, there would not be any resultant MMF left out due to the circulating current. So in that case, the, the material would behave like a non-magnetic material. However, for our consideration, there is no such thing called non-magnetic material. All materials are magnetic, of course, depending upon the nature of there are few magnetic few materials which can be used for proper magnetic utilization, proper utilization in magnetic uh, requirement from the magnetic point of view. Most of the materials, I would say most means almost all materials cannot be used for practical purpose. However, they may, may have uh, other different uh, usage also. If they are for us, if there are there must be some unneutralized dipole dipole moment which is orbiting around the nucleus, uh, which would create the resultant give us the resultant dipole moment, and due to this resultant dipole moment or which produces the MMF, we would have some sort of magnetic flux generated, which would be used by us. So magnetic field produced by the electrons, there must be some sort of uh, measurement. So that measurement is or magnetic is given by magnetic dipole moment. And if you go by the uh, following deduction, the magnetic dipole moment is given by the area of the loop uh, which, uh, which is there in multiplied by the circulating current around the loop. Of course, this is a complete loop which is produced by the, if you consider the electron that is rotating. So uh, in effect, that is a complete loop of a current rotating around the nucleus or moving around the nucleus. So the magnetic dipole moment of that electron on electron, that would be area of the loop, loop of the electron which is created due to its rotation multiplied by the circulating current or that is the charge into the velocity. Dipole the, these dipoles when placed around or placed inside in an external magnetic field which is produced by something else or by some external mechanism, this dipole would tend to align themselves along or in a, in, a, in a few special cases against the opposite to the direction of the mag applied applied externally applied magnetic field. So due to the support, due to this, uh, uh, due to this trying or the, uh, due to the dipole moments when they try to align themselves along or opposite whatever, there would be some sort of torque generated. So this torque can be used by us. Not only that, that that is an external or I would say physical uh, uh, ex, uh, physical uh, I would say characteristics which would be used by us. Otherwise, for a dipole moment when they are uh, 
where they are in they are inside an applied magnetic field they would try to align themselves otherwise so that means that torque or the energy for that alignment that must be provided by the from, by by the external magnetic field so in unmagnetized specimen the dipoles due to the magnetic moments uh, the dipole moments they would attract each attract or repel each other such that they would form a closed path like this if we draw like let's say these are the dipole moments which can be uh, shown by the arrows so they would somehow you can find let's say several and such loops however you would always find statistically or if you look closely you would find always find several closed loops so that means they are vectors of the magnetic vectors dipole moments all of them would be neutralized if there is no unneutralized magnetic field or the dipole moment we cannot have any external magnetic effect however if there is any dipole moment unneutralized we can have magnetic effect so when we try to magnetize a material let's say for of course all magnet materials cannot be magnetized for uh, i would say appreciable amount of magnetization so in that case when you try to magnetize them the dipole should line up along or opposite the applied mmf now when the applied mmf is applied mmf or applied magnetic field is removed the dipole moments may remain aligned in case they remain aligned they would exhibit permanent magnetism which uh, we can use later as a source of magnetization or source of ma magnetic field otherwise for most of the materials they would make would not show any resultant of the any uh, any alignment when the dipole or external magnetic field is removed this readiness with how good a dipole moment try to align itself along the magnetic field external magnetic field that is given by the measurement of or the quantitatively that is given by the term permeability so for most of the materials we would see later that the permeability is of the order of just vacuum free space or air for other materials so the permeability is different that is given by the by the value of mu or permeability which is multiplied which is given by the multi product of relative permeability and the free space permeability okay. so here we would go into because we are studying a bit the magnet uh, studying materials we would go into go into something called magnetization so we have already we already know the magnetic b or the magnetic flux which is induced when there is an application of magnetic uh, magnet uh, uh, mmf so that is given by b relationship b of b and h however we are we would come across a new term here called magnetization so magnetization as such is a measurement of the behavior of the what happens inside the magnetic material when there is one when there is certain external magnetic field applied and the after effects due to this externally applied magnetic field uh, to the material now what is the value of magnetization or quantitatively mathematic uh, quantitatively that is the dipole moments per unit volume that is called magnetization so now that means if we go into the magnetic flux and uh, mmf relationship that does not tell us about anything called dipole moment now magnetization as such directly gives you the dipole moment per unit volume or that is the characteristics of the material itself sir ha sir ke odai dhukte chaiche dhukte pacche na tai ekhane to amake notification ei etokkhone dekhalo ar to karo notification nei ekjon eschilo मैगनेटिक मेटेरियल इज एल सो one 
one second the notifications are hindering this so let's say this is the length l and for this we have to consider this is the length total length this to be l okay let's also consider the cross sectional area is a the number of turns in and current through this is i so the mmf is a uh, mmf is ni and for that the uh, magnetic field intensity h is given by ni by l that's the standard terminology the coil as such here the shown in this slide that may be for our practical purpose like this here first one is the blue one is the rod core uh, rod core coil next one is the toroidal core so, and this one here has different shapes this may be used for it to make a transformer or to make a uh, make an inductor here in this third case and fourth case of course they make an electric motor where the core coil is through the here with the uh, magnetic material inside so there are several uh, the coil shapes may be different depending upon the structure for the transformer of course that there is a magnetic material inside and over there the core is wood, like this so if the coil is coil has a vacuum or free space or rear whatever inside the coil so that the magnetic flux produced by that that would be mu naught into h however once the vacuum or the inside material is replaced by a homogeneous magnetic material which has a permeability of mu r the flux produced would be changed and that would become mu naught for the same magnetic field that would become mu naught mu r into h now we can consider as if for our uh, consideration uh, for our magnetic material consideration that let's say the change in the magnetic material or sorry change in the magnetic field flux density that happens due to the change inside the magnetic material of course that happens so what is that change change is the in the magnetic flux, uh, flux density that is equals to b minus b naught because we have changed the material inside so that is equals to the mu naught into mu r minus 1 into h so let's consider as if the because the outside field magnetic field applied magnetic field has not changed so that means inside them there is a change in the magnetic field somehow and let's denote that by this mu h dash h dash is mu r minus 1 into h okay so if we consider that the h dash there is a change in terms of magnetic field inside and that is denoted by h dash so let's consider once again that is due to the change in the current inside the material and that is supplied by something inside the material and if we can denote that let's that would be denoted by the mma produced extra mma produced that is n i dash divided by l because the we are considering here length of the material is almost same as the length of the or the effective length of the material is almost same as the length of the coil so multiplying and dividing by the area so that it be n i dash n i into area divided by the l into a which is nothing but the volume of the magnetic material here so the upper term if you go by that is the total number of i current into area that is the dipole moment into n is the total number of dipole moments divided by the unit volume that is nothing but the but the magnetization by our definition which we discussed in the last slide so that means h test is equals to mu r minus m that is the magnetization or given in other way that is the total amount of dipole moment which is or which comes out from the magnetic material to produce the extra magnetic field by the magnetic material so we have few other extra definitions here so we define this relationship or for m by h which must be the uh, property of the characteristics of the material itself when we consider h uh, b by h that is the property of the material plus the free space of the vacuum however m by h is the property of the magnetic material with respect to the applied magnetic field and that is denoted by this uh, symbol chi or uh, sometimes call on a, some some people call that chi so uh, so that is that is called the magnetic susceptibility 
So the value of that is magnetic susceptibility is mu r minus one. And if you consider or if you remember that mu r equals to one for free space, so that means we are actually subtracting the effect of the free space or vacuum from the effect which is pro applied to the magnet or by the magnetic material. So that means we are once again restricting ourselves within the property of the magnetic material only. Uh, taking out the effect of the magnet, uh, taking out the effect of the air or free space. So the resultant flux density that would be equals to that generated by the free space that is B B naught plus that is generated by the magnetic material that is mu naught into the H dash or mu naught into the magnetic material or magnetization. So that means that is equals to mu naught into H plus M or not? That is not uh, at the end. That is equal to mu naught mu r into h. So we define flux density with respect to the generated flux density inside the material or inside the coil with respect to the magnetization and the free space uh, magnetic uh, field. Now, magnetic materials can be classified application-wise. What is most, what is more important to us? Uh, okay. What is more important to us as an electrical engineer, that is hard hard magnetic material and soft magnetic material. Hard magnetic material, so you let us see it, is used to uh, make or uh, produce permanent magnets. Soft magnetic materials are used to make electromagnets. So uh, the magnetic behavior or the magnetic direction would usually change depending upon the requirement and uh, frequency. Behavior wise, this is the pro property of the material or uh, uh, which is the uh, the theme of this class uh, that is, those are usually diamagnetic, paramagnetic, ferromagnetic, ferrimagnetic and there are other classifications also. So all those uh, comes by the physics of the magnetic material or chemistry whatever you see. Now this classification we would study mainly first the behavior wise classification and then we would discuss about the, uh, the discuss the application wise classification the behavior wise classification or that the classification or the classes remain same however these classifications can be discussed into several terms or from the several uh, i would say directions as such so let's discuss one by one the classification one where the magnetic materials can be classified all these remember all these classification is behavior wise classification same classifications by the name however these classifications can be uh, i would say achieved from several different directions several different paths so we are discussing that classification one where the magnetic materials for the magnetic materials the magnetization versus the applied field or m versus h can be classified into deep, several classes depending upon the sign simply the sign of the uh, susceptibility. The value of the susceptibility or sign of the susceptibility can be negative, that can be positive. The, when the susceptibility value is negative, that would be called a diamagnetic material. Remember, of all the magnetic materials we, would, we are going to discuss, this is a very special class. Not only that, the most of the materials in nature, those are diamagnetic. So this, probably this classification has highest number of members in nature. Uh, those have po positive uh, susceptibility value, they can be called diamagnetic and paramagnetic when the magnitude of the susceptibilities of the order of diamagnetic or very small, that is of the that is usually called, okay, when the value of this permeability is very small of the order of 10 to the power around minus 6, so, and you, we are subtract, uh, of course, we are uh, subtracting the effect of the permeability, uh, free space permeability, Otherwise, the that would not be called permeability. Permea, sorry, that would not be called susceptibility. That would be called permeability. That becomes just almost equals to one. The difference between or the deviation from one would be of the order of ten to the power minus six. However, when that value is of susceptibility is negative, that would be called diamagnetic. When that is positive, that would be called paramagnetic. Now, in both these cases, the value or the relationship between m and h or is linear. Or uh, we can almost uh, draw them, or almost uh, if we draw m versus h characteristics, that would behave almost in a linear fashion. However, when m versus h characteristics is non-linear, 
and of course susceptibility is a bit greater than compared to that value of diamagnetic or paramagnetic we have several classes and there are those classes can be uh, the most important of uh, those classes is ferromagnetic material which we use for our practical purpose next classification this is dictated by the presence or absence of the permanent magnetic dipole moment if the permanent magnetic dipole moment is absent and that is very important to remember there is no permanent magnetic dipole moment in the diamagnetic material if there are permanent magnetic dipole moments those can be anything except the diamagnetic part diamagnetic dipole moment so in absence of the permanent magnetic dipole moment in diamagnetic material how the magnetization or change in the magnetization occurs that changes occurs due to the due to the effect that when the individual electrons or try to align themselves such that they are not affected by the permanent magnetic or they are not affected by the externally applied magnetic field so if the permanent magnetic dipole moments exists then that would be they may be called para paramagnetic ferromagnetic anti ferromagnetic or ferromagnetic depending upon the interaction between the permanent magnetic dipole moments in normal condition they would be Uh, they will form a closed path. However, when applied by the external bag, uh, or induced by an external magnetic field, they can form any shape or they can take some uh, alignment. And depending upon the alignment, we would get different nature of the permanent nature of the magnetic material. So when these interactions are such that individual magnetic moment are oriented random, and resultant in that case the resultant dipole moment would be negligible. so that will be called paramagnetic so in paramagnetic there are dipole mag di permanent magnetic dipole moments however they are aligned in a very random way such that resultant dipole moment is negligible and if the dipole moments align in parallel such that they are added up added to each other that their effects are added to each other they would behave usually or may behave like a ferromagnetic material when the dipole moments align themselves in anti parallel way that here let's move a bit forward so in the first case here if you look here in the first case the dipole even if the dipole moments are there however they are they are aligned anti uh, they are aligned in such a way that the alignment is completely random and you can always find some sort of closed path which can be drawn through the dipole moments so as said the resultant effect is almost zero so that would be called a paramagnetic material when they are all aligned in the same direction they would be called or uh, the resultant moments are added up they would be called they or they would can form a ferromagnetic material when they are aligned and in anti parallel way see anti parallel way the once again the resultant magnetic moment is almost zero uh, however because they are aligned parallel or anti parallel very similar to ferromagnetic material so that would be called anti ferromagnetic material compared to the just the opposite of the ferromagnetic material in anti ferromagnetic material this alignment which may not be perfectly in anti parallel there may be some sort of angle of the remember this has two uh, i would say components so one component is one component is nullifying each other However, other component is there, which may be very small. Remember this difference in deviation from the anti-parallel alignment is very small, and moreover, the dipole moment itself, if you consider one dipole moment, the effect of that is very small. So that means the resultant for the anti-parallel material for the case of three, that would be zero exactly or exactly. However, the same anti-parallel magnetic material, if you consider the Uh, picture number four. There may be some very small magnetic metri or magnetic moment, resultant magnetic moment available. Now, when the for the anti-ferromagnetic material, the resultant moments or the dipole moments are aligned opposite to each other. When this oppositely aligned dipole moments are not equal, if you look here, this dipole moment and this dipole moments are aligned opposite. However, their result or their magnitude are not equal, so there will be some sort of resultant. So this sort of a mag uh, alignment or the, when the material aligns this way, that would be called a ferromagnetic material. So these things are written here. 
permanent magnetic dipole moments tries to align along the uh, externally applied field and that would give us different values of permeability or susceptibility so if you consider susceptibility value by uh, by x by its susceptibility by its value or the permeability by its value so for ferromagnetic material this is very high for paramagnetic material this is susceptibility value is almost Zero, or I would say, out of the order of ten to the power minus six, uh, or the permeability value is exactly or almost very near to near to one, negligibly different from one. For diamagnetic material, almost that is susceptibility value or sorry, permeability value is slightly negligibly less than one. For paramagnetic material or ferromag uh, sorry diamagnetic material when they are applied or they are uh, inside a uh, inside a magnetic field there will be very minute distortion of the magnetic externally applied magnetic field material magnetic field however when a ferromagnetic material is placed inside a material uh, placed inside a magnetic field there would be uh, i would say significant amount of distortion distortion in the sense let's say they they are the we apply the magnetic fields like let's say the direction can be magnetic uh, field or the edge can be shown in this way so if we consider that this is the core of the uh, magnetic material so for diamagnetic material this let's let me first draw the magnetic material so this okay so let's say the central one passes through this and the other lines that would pass outside because the susceptibility being negative or permeability being negative that would actually repel the magnetic lines for per okay so for paramagnetic materials let's draw the inside one first there would be very small amount of distortion like this for ferromagnetic material however the distortion would be like this that would take into take the lines as much lines as possible inside the core so this way you can consider this as magnetic lensing some sort of lens as if lens is there which is bending the magnetic lines so diamagnetism is the universal property of the magnetic universal property of the magnetic material as long if the magnetic material contains some sort of electron there would be dipole moment and due to that there would be magnetic magnetic property however because in most of the material the main dipole moments actually nullifies each other so they become diamagnetic so due to that diamagnetism is the remember here when we when i am saying that the dipole moments are nullifying each other we are saying that we are discussing about dipole moments nullified by itself inside the material for diamagnetic material material means inside the atom or the molecule whichever may be the uh, lowest most existence point for the material so that happens inside the uh, existence of the material however for paramagnetic material the di dipole moment is not neutralized inside the material however when you consider the core of the material the bulk of the material for that the dipole moments are neutralized by one from one material one let's say one molecule to another molecule this way or one ion to another ion this way the diamagnetic material diamagnetism is the universal property for other properties we must have permanent magnetic dipole moments presence of permanent magnetic dipole moments moreover they must remain unneutralized diamagnetic property is a bit weaker of the let's say if both are tend to the of the order of tend to the power minus 6 one can be 10 another can be another may be 5 this sort of difference is there so uh, ferromagnetic material although they come from the uh, unneutralized dipole moments however just from the unneutralized dipole moments they cannot be explained or they cannot be 
they cannot form that form a ferromagnetic material. We require some sort of different explanation or different uh, material property to make a ferromagnetic material from just the uh, presence of the permanent magnetic dipole moments. Now, what is the origin of the permanent magnetic dipole moments? We can have that origin is mainly from the electron orbi or, uh, you know, orbit and, or electrons around the nucleus that can come from the or that can be calculated from the orbital angular dipole angular moment. So the, the, they are rotating around the nucleus. So that means there is a current, and due to that, they would form uh, the the orbit they would give us orbital angular moment and from that we can calculate what would be the contribution of the permanent magnetic dipole moment by using this uh, Bohr magneton. So that calculation probably I hope that you because you are fresh student from the VHS classes where this would this was you read it in detail compared to me. So I hope you can get there. Otherwise, the, the problem with this is that these are or, or, orbital angular moment that, that does not directly give us the idea of the, uh, I would say, uh, magnetic pro property. The magnetic property is given by the, uh, uh, one second. the magnetic quantum number of the four quantum numbers. Probably, I if I remember, that is given by this AML. N is the uh, principal quantum number. Then L probably something. If I remember, I don't actually remember. It, this is called azimuthal, some sort of way. Or AML is the uh, magnetic quantum number. If I name that properly. So, depending upon if the L is minus, depending upon the value of ML there would be different nature of the alignment with respect to externally applied field. So if that is a minus one, that would align opposite to the applied field, zero, that means that is uh, indifferent to the alignment, or there is no alignment as such, plus one means that would align along the direction of the magnetic field. So depending upon these alignments of the, of the electrons, there, would be, there may be or may not be resultant permanent magnetic dipole moments. Okay. So main uh, presence or main contribution comes from the electron spin angular momentum, which is around positive plus half and minus half of the, around, the, uh, around the axis of the electron. So due to that, there will be uh, dipole moments, dipole moments. Nuclear spin angular uh, dipole angular momentum from because the nucleus has a very high uh, momentum, uh, very high mass, so due to that, the contribution from these are almost one by 1,000 compared to the electron angular momentums. So that means the main contribution comes from the electron the spin angular momentum and the orbital angular momentum due to the rotation of the electron, not from the nucleus. Okay. Let's come to our main point, the uh, classifications here. First classification for us is the diamagnetism or diamagnetic material. So in diamagnetic material, the magnetic property mainly comes from the orbital angular momentum of the electrons. So the, of course, due to that, there is steady flow of current due to the rotation. However, these magnetic or uh, these materials produce or exhibit negative magnetism. That means they try to align or opposite to the direction of the magnetic uh, externally applied field. That means they push out, if there are say, magnetic lines, magnetic flux lines, they would push out the magnetic flux line from their core of the core of the magnet core of the diamagnetic material. So here are a few, a few examples. As you can see, the di diamond, graphite, all those are usually, uh, they have complete field cell. So uh, in terms of what, uh, from the either from the orbital angular momentum or magnetic quantum number, so they they are diamagnetic material and they are uh, susceptibility is shown here. The susceptibility is of the order of ten to around ten to the power minus five. Diamagnetic susceptibility, as you can see here, that is very small and negative. Diamagnetic materials so repel the ex externally applied field of first lines. So. Here, because we don't have any alignment, we would see later for other materials, there is a chance because 
there are two actually different uh, source of, uh, different nature of alignment one when you apply an external magnetic field the uh, dipole moments should try to align themselves along or opposite to the direction of the magnetic field however there is another more, another effect which is due to the temperature or heat the dipole moments actually those are electrons they are also vibrating uh, around a mean position with respect to a mean position due to as the temperature increases their vibration increases or their energy increases so they can move around and they actually in that case they can uh, to break the formation due to the alignment due to the externally applied field now as in diamagnetic material we would see later so that means there would be always a play or fight between the two alignment procedure alignment or misalignment procedure uh, misalignment property one due to the externally applied field which try, field which tries to align and one due to that uh, temperature or heat effect which tries to disalign or randomize the uh, dipole moments the diamagnetic material since the diamagnetic material does not have any dipole moment permanent magnetic dipole moment there is no effect called alignment of the dipole moment so that means the temperature effect on the susceptibility is not there the susceptibility means susceptibility is calculated from the tendency to align which is to, to the externally applied field and the opposing effect for the susceptibility or which actually restrict susceptibility at a temperature which is due to the misalignment or i would say opposing effect so as the alignment effect is not there of course the susceptibility value is there however the alignment effect due to the from the external field is not there because there is no permanent magnetic dipole moment so there is no temperature dependency of susceptibility so if the atoms or molecule do not have a magnetic moment resultant magnetic moment the diamagnetism is the only property magnetic property they can have paramagnetic susceptibility arises due to favorable orientation however orientation happens of course the question of orientation happens if there is any permanent magnetic dipole moments diamagnetic susceptibility arises because there are the dipole moments or the orbital moments tries to uh, Form a structure where the energy, total energy is less, minimum. So due to that, they try to align. I would say not align. They would try to form a structure, form a uh, structure such that the energy is minimum. Due to that, they would try to repel the or uh, repel the uh, externally applied field. Now, practically, all the molecules which have valence bonds formed by antiparallel or closed valence bonds. so our field valence bonds uh, complete valence bond they would form a diamagnetic material so practically all organic molecules are diamagnetic material so now you can consider the uh, the number or i would say huge group of the material almost all materials are diamagnetic materials paramagnetic material to make a uh, for a paramagnetic material there must be some sort of permanent magnetic dipole moment that must must exist within the atoms or molecules or ions they moreover for this magnetic material or uh, dipole moments must be able to align themselves along in the presence of the externally magnetic field thus they can give us or they can rise to some positive contribution as long as they can uh, align along the magnetic field so they would give some positive contribution contribution to the magnetic flux density so they increase so there would be, that means there would be positive magnetic susceptibility for paramagnetic dipole moments the paramagnetic dipole moments align uh, the dipole dipole moments align themselves by shifting position of the electrons of course here uh, for all the cases if the alignment happens because there that would be give us Uh, some sort of minimum energy con uh, condition in any in nature any uh, any structure of uh, i would say bonds or the materials that remains because that is the minimum energy condition now once we apply a external apply an ex external magnetic field that changes the structure of the st energy of the whole structure now once again the material would try to align on the magnetic dipole moments in the, for the magnetic materials that would align themselves such that the energy once again becomes minimum 
of course to have paramagnetic dipole moments there must be some unneutralized uh, electrons in the parallel complex or uh, there must be some uh, incomplete cell uh, usually atoms of transition elements or ions or rare earth elements where usually the there is one extra electron or one less electron from the complete cell that those form some paramagnetic materials usually only one contribution from each atom or each molecule so this uh, okay in normal condition when they are not aligned or in like say virgin paramagnetic material the magnetic space moment would distribute randomly such that you can always find some sort of closed path through the dipole moments so the total contribution of the magnetic moment due to that that remains zero now once we apply a magnetic field they they would align along the direction or tend to align along the direction of the magnetic field and they would contribute positively now there would be of course what we already discussed there would be an equilibrium such that the, there would be a, because of the ordering effect of the externally applied field and tendency because that as long as the, the temperature there is such uh, heat energy due to that there will be vibration and they would try to dissolve uh, they would try to i would say misalign from the external from any uh, order and they would create a random a random structure through which you can find a closed path so the temperature or the heat they would thermal effect they try to randomize the uh, dipole moments and externally applied field try to order or line up the dipole moments so always there would be some sort of uh, uh, some sort of equilibrium there must be some equilibrium because as the thermal or uh, temperature increases thermal randomness increases as the material or the externally applied field value magnitude increases the ordering or the line up increases so if the equilibrium is uh, i would say uh, not there such that the ordering effect is higher so that means more number of dipole moments should be aligned along the direction of the field however if the temperature is higher temperature is increased beyond the equilibrium so that means thermal randomness should increase and lower much lower number of uh, dipole moment would align along the direction of the magnetic field so that means here we have a nature or we have a characteristics which can be drawn between the uh, susceptibility which is the application or which is the tendency to align and temperature uh, of the magnetic uh, temperature of the material so that nature is given by of course because as the temperature increases that means susceptibility should reduce that is given by this relationship where paramagnetic susceptibility is given by this m square by 3 kt where the m k and t are uh, as shown here the paramagnetic susceptibility as shown by the nature is is of course positive and however this, this is temperature dependent so this this equation or this nature is known as the curie law curie or curie whatever way you pronounce pronounce some people pronounce is that curie or well, some people pronounce that as curie so we usually call the m square by 3k this part to be constant so that the susceptibility is given by susceptibility is equals to c by t where c is called curie constant now if you look at the nature so uh, on the left hand side left hand scale the susceptibility is plot directly so uh, okay so this is the susceptibility plot and this is one by susceptibility plot so susceptibility plotted by that is one by susceptibility or temp, uh, that is uh, sorry one by temperature so that reduces not exponentially how it how very inversely so and one by susceptibility that value is linear or we can draw as such by a straight line now for large applied fields or low temperature to a be that is not visible if you i have sent you the uh, presentation so you can uh, actually zoom it zoom this part and look into that at very near to the origin there is no line actually on this part the value becomes almost a constant value not dependent upon temperature this becomes a bit temperature independent 
so that is not our point so then the normal behavior or the behavior beyond beyond that uh, nature is our point so we are not discussing that so paramagnetic material can have for some material can have a positive susceptibility usually of course that range can range from what the order of 10 to the power minus 5 to 10 to the power minus 3 at room temperature so this is much greater may be much greater compared to the diamagnetic material for most of the paramagnetic materials however the order is of the order around 10 to the power minus 5 now let's come to the main point however for our class Although this is the main point, we will discuss this in detail. However, we have to take into account other materials also. This that is by, that is required for uh, both our uh, knowledge and syllabus. So ferromagnetism, of course, for this the relative permeability or susceptibility is much higher compared to the ferromag compared to other materials. Moreover, this forms or this has a hysteresis or this is not actually linear for diamagnetic material. The, of course, uh, paramagnetic material, the behavior of the external magnet, uh, susceptibility with respect to externally applied magnetic field, that behavior is completely linear. As you increase the susceptibility, sorry, increase the externally, uh, externally applied field, susceptibility increases because more number of uh, materials should be aligned. However, for ferromagnetic material, this is not so. They are not directly, uh, although linear, however, there is something called hysteresis effect between the two. Moreover, the value of the susceptibility depends not only on temperature but also on the magnetic history whether that was earlier earlier magnetized earlier or not and what what value what is the value at the starting of the starting value of the uh, susceptible starting susceptibility value of the magnetic material ferromagnetic material that is also important paramagnetic material or other material or ferrodiamagnetic material, they do not show spontaneous something called spontaneous magnetism. Spontaneous magnetism means you apply an externally applied ex applied external field, the dipole moments align, you remove the externally applied field, external field, the dipole moment once again become misaligned or I would say random because the due to the thermal agitation. Now it may take some time, however, that would finally become random, become completely random. For ferromagnetic material, this does not happen so. We can remove, once, even if we remove the magnetic field, externally applied magnetic field, the, one second. There can be some sort of spontaneous magnetism. That means even if the magnetic field is externally external field is removed, the magnetic material may remain magnetized a bit, and that can produce magnetic field by itself. So that is called spontaneous magnetization. So same thing is written in different language that even if they, they can have some magnetization value m, which is non-zero, even in the absence of the field where h becomes zero. So all these like earlier case is attributed to uncompensated electron spins. So for ferromagnetic material, which occurs in nature, they are usually due to the KLN L cells, uh, probably you know this better. So all these are written here. So uh, due to the effect, we can see uh, from, we can calculate mathematically the for ferromagnetic material like iron, they are the resultant nature effect should be four bore magneton. For cobalt, that should be three bore magneton. For nickel, that should be two bore magneton. However, in solids, actually we find that the bore magnetons are a bit different. That is 2.22 for iron, 1. Point, around 1.7 for uh, cobalt, and 0 0.6 0 0.61 for nickel. This way. For ferromagnetic material, there is another important aspect that is called cool temperature beyond which the magnetic material or the ferromagnetic material becomes a paramagnetic material. Now origin of ferromagnetic material, of course first point is that there must be some sort of dipole, dipole moments otherwise there is no question of ferromagnetic, ferromagnetism or magnetism as such. Now the problem with the other understanding of the uh, uh, starting from the paramagnetic material or that uh, physics is that here 
especially the value of m can be non zero even in the absence of h where h is meant zero so we can try to uh, people try to explain them that there must be some force which aligns by itself because for earlier cases the electric dipole moment is aligned in presence of due to the externally applied field however here m exists in absence of the field that means the dipole moments by itself can be aligned so that that means people started thinking there must be some force which tries to align the spins of the dipole moments by itself so in quantum theory this force or this uh, tendency is denoted by something called exchange force so this is the force of interaction between the dipole moments itself them or themselves which is found to exist between the spinning electrons and due to this exchange force the neighboring dipole moments of spins they would try to align themselves remember the two things parallel or anti parallel they can align themselves parallel or anti parallel this tendency of uh, aligning themselves parallel or anti parallel depends upon the two things or it can be found they can be dictated i would say from that mainly de depending upon the two terms that is one one is given by this capital d that is the distance between the centers of the atoms which are uh, contributing the dipole moments and small d is the distance of the electron cell responsible for the magnetic property that is the who are responsible one second for providing the dipole moments when this ratio between capital d and small d is almost uh, around 1.5 so the exchange force is almost zero so there is no net tendency between the or there is no net contribution or net effect between two dipole moments so that they would not align so that is that become material becomes paramagnetic when that is less than 1.5 the exchange force is negative and the dipole moments would behave or align themselves in anti parallel way well, and we would get an anti paramagnetic material when the exchange force is positive or exchange force sorry d by d ratio is greater than 1.5 the exchange force is positive and with the dipole moments line up themselves by themselves due to this exchange force and the behavior is paramagnetic when this is very much greater than 1.5 so that is weakly paramagnetic so on this basis of this interacting interaction between the dipole moments scientist called way stretch scientist he actually suggested that in ferromagnetic material the that ferromagnetic material the may force of the magnetic field seen by the ferromagnetic dipole ferromagnetic dipole moment is not the dipole moment just which is applied externally they also see an effect or say some contribution from the neighboring dipole moments so this is given by the external internal field which is seen by one dipole moment that is the summation of externally applied field plus some contribution from the neighboring dipole moments which is given by this gamma into m which is the susceptibility which is the contribution from the externally applied or the uh, sorry which is the magnetization or the presence of the extra, uh, presence of the other dipole moments so this proportionality constant gamma is known as internal field constant uh, so so in case this gamma contribution or the susceptibility gamma contribution is very small they may uh, behave like a or behave like a paramagnetic material otherwise we can have if that is greater we can have a ferromagnetic or anti ferromagnetic material depending upon the nature or direction uh, i would say uh, positive uh, whether that is sign or that that is positive or negative now considering this equation uh ferromagnetic susceptibility if we consider susceptibility over the just over the curie temperature where because uh, above curie temperature this uh, the material becomes paramagnetic material so there we can consider that the curie law which we discussed for the uh, paramagnetic material that holds and we here also we are also we have uh, we would consider that the ways this uh, equation where internal field is external field plus the contribution of the magnetization that also holds true 
So we, in that case, we can consider the Curie law above the above the Curie temperature, which is the which is the law for paramagnetic material, where the m versus h here h must be replaced by this h internal. So m versus m divided by h this ratio that would be equal to c by t from the paramagnetic equation. So here. Uh, just actually uh, simplify the equation such that we can find the susceptibility which is m by h where this can be shown to be equals to c divided by t minus gamma c which we can simplify or we can write as c, c divided by t minus capital T f. Okay. So so that this tells us that we can have some non-zero magnetization even uh, okay non-zero external field which can be shown by this equation this law because that is modified by ways this uh, this law holds both in the name of Curie and ways and called the Curie ways law for ferromagnetic material and this is valid of course in the region of the susceptible paramagnetic region in the paramagnetic region so now if we plot that once again like paramagnetic material this would uh, the, this would form a straight line almost a straight line starting from this region and however once again very similar to paramagnetic material in this region that would not be linear now, if we extend this part, linear part, this somewhere this becomes zero and that would be called paramagnetic Curie temperature. And when this actual characteristics that becomes zero, that would be called ferromagnetic Curie temperature. So we have two actually for ferro ferromagnetic material, we have two temperatures, uh, Curie temperatures. One is called ferromagnetic Curie temperature, which is a, which is of importance to us. Otherwise, one another there is another temperature called paramagnetic Curie temperature for ferromagnetic material. That is when the linear part or the straight line part is extended to cut the temperature axis. The difference between these two is very small, of the order of few tens of tem, uh, Kelvin. That's all. Now, this ferromagnetic behavior, even if we con consider from the dipole, dipole moment structure or dipole moment nature, that cannot be explained from the, just, uh, that cannot explain the ferromagnetic behavior. So, of course, we can go from that uh, same nature, same logic, people started going from the same logic, that ferromagnetism is caused by the di permanent magnetic dipole moments. So, however, according to this model, chromium manganese should also be a uh, ferromagnetic material, which is not. So, they can be explained by this exchange force behavior, which would try, which would try to align the uh, neighboring dipole moments in parallel or anti-parallel. Now there comes the question, if that is so, why we find ferromagnetic materials which is unmagnetized in nature? We find so, may, so much ferromagnetic material which is not magnetized by itself. So if there was the tendency of this due to this alignment of the, by due to this exchange force, the ferromagnetic material would, by itself would, can become a ferromagnetic material which is not in usually found, found in nature. The material, of course, we find uh, getting uh, magnetized state, however, most of the material can be found in unmagnetized state. Now this is so. This was given in 19, uh, this was explained by few, two hypotheses by the same scientist ways, which both of these hypotheses was later proved. And for his theory of this exchange force, he, the, scientist ways he received Nobel Prize. So first hypothesis was that uh, in ferromagnetic material the molecular force acted by its by themselves such that they uh, of course below the Curie temperature the field is so strong that can magnetize the substance to saturation. Due to the exchange force the dipole moment would align themselves in such a way 
and the field is so strong in ferromagnetic material that they would create a spontaneous magnetic field and they would create and and i would say a material which is saturated up to its magnetized magnetic value or uh, the they are uh, magnetically saturated to their limit now this was found to be true experimentally and theoretically the however this first hypothesis is incomplete in the sense if we get saturate if, if the magnetic materials or ferromagnetic materials are by themselves saturated due to the exchange force once again how do we find material in unmagnetized state the same question repeats now second hypothesis is that the ferromagnetic material in this saturated magnetic state and does not come in complete complete structure or complete material there would be several parts in the in a ferromagnetic core or ferromagnetic bulk of the bulk of the ferromagnetic material those would be called domains not the complete material and these domains are spontaneously magnetized to if they are saturated value called m saturation now these domains there would be several such domains several means few thousands of such domains in a bulk of the material if not lakhs so these domains are saturated however these domains are aligned in such a random way that you would always find that there would be a closed path through the domains now for a given domain of course there is a dipole moment direction or the saturation magnetization direction so once again we can draw the domains like this so once again we can earlier we have for paramagnetic materials so we have shown that these are the dipole moments now you can consider as if this is a domain where the magnetic saturation can be shown in this direction so for the ferromagnetic material there is not one dipole moment however there are several dipole moments such that there are do they form a domain and the domain direction of the magnetic saturation magnetization for the domains can be shown like this and they form a closed path like this now the mag for mag, mag to magnetize the material the domains must be aligned in linearly or they must be al aligned parallel such that we can have it magnetized or magnetized material now above this above curie temperature once again the exchange force disappears or reduces linearly so due to that there will be randomization now the size of the domains vary depending upon uh, depending upon the number of atoms and number of molecules they contain the domains are separated by something called domain walls now this figure shows you the first the left most figure shows you the actual structure you can see there are several there are domains which is which can be seen very easily using a microscope sort of thing and they can be represented by the physical nature where the left rightmost side shows you the domains with the domain uh, direction of magnetic saturation and uh, m set or the um, saturation magnetization and you can always find some sort of closed path through the domains so thereby we cannot find any uh, spontaneous result and spontaneous magnetism from that now why the domains are there uh, okay so why do the ferromagnetic materials or the why form a domain and differ several from such several domains or they try to uh, i would say uh, random align randomly with respect to each other for that consider the figure consider figure 1 where there is one magnet let's say and then lines of flux flux lines actually passes through from let's say north south pole to north pole inside the magnet and from there from the north pole the flux lines comes out and through here the flux line passes through uh, reaches the south pole now consider the next figure the figure 2 where the same material is divided into two parts there are two domains which are aligned anti parallel now you see the flux lines of course that passes through here However, the length of the flux line, so the amount of flux line passing through the air, is very small. So that means energy required for the flux lines or the total, I would say, arrangement is much less compared to one than in two. So for 
figure number two, the energy requirement is much lower because the amount of plus the in air is very small. Now, if we divide into several such domains, number of domains, you can see in figure three, the amount of plus the in air is much smaller. So this way, as we go on dividing the uh, dividing a bulk of the material into several domains, the flux lines through air would be much smaller. So this way, the total energy content in the material that due to the magnetic material would be much smaller. So that material can remain in lowest energy state by dividing itself into several such domains and uh, aligning themselves in this randomly. Now, size of the domain may be of the order of 0.01 mm that I am saying of the higher order. Of course, this is rough order, rough estimate. The actual size of the domain, we would see later that depends not, uh, that depends uh, first condition 0.01 mm that is for uh, unmagnetized specimen. Actual size of the domain actually depends on the not only the shape and size of the crystal, but also history of the specimen. We would see later that the size of the domain can be increased or reduced depending on when we try to magnetize the material. So if we leave the magnetic material or leave the, the ferromagnetic material in magnetized condition, the size of the domain may increase. So domain wall, domains may are uh, separated by domain wall. The domain wall thickness uh, domain wall is not actually or just a wall means that is formed actually by the dipole moments once again or the atoms once again. However, inside the domain wall, there is not one atom or I would say just uh, one wall of atoms which does not separate the domain walls. It may happen there are several atoms inside the domain walls or there are several number of dipole moments inside the wall. Now, if you look, uh, there are two types of domain walls actually. One is called nil wall. Uh, who discovered the uh, anti behavior or explained the anti ferromagnetic behavior of anti ferromagnetic material? So, one is called the, the left one. Left one is called the nil wall, and the right one, or figure number two, that is called block wall. Here, if you look here for the nil wall, the leftmost on the leftmost side the dipole moments are aligned upwards on the right hand side right hand side for new wall the dipole moments is aligned downward inside the domain wall there is gradual change in the direction of the dipole moments starting from the up, starting from upwards towards the, the value becomes horizontal then finally the value becomes or the direction becomes uh, downward so there is a gradual change in the direction Inside the block wall, once again, the starting from the same direction, you see there is the direction change, however, occurs in the third, I would say, axis. Here, if you look here, let's draw the x and y axis. Let's see this is the x direction and this is the y direction. The dipole moments are aligned from the left hand side domain in the y direction positively and in the right hand side y direction negatively. Inside there, the dipole moment size size has no y x x contribution or x x direction. Now for the for inside the domain wall for, or nil wall, there is a change in the x direction of the dipole moments, and finally the y direction becomes negative or minus y direction becomes negative. However, for block wall, there is no x and y direction. Or oh, sorry, there is a let's draw this thing x and y. However, the change in the direction is in the z direction. So first, the y direction was y direction was upwards or positive. Then at the right hand side, the y direction is negative. The change in the dipole moment direction changes along the z direction. At certain point, that becomes completely aligned along z direction without any y component, and finally the direction changes to be make the y direction or y component to the negative. Okay. So now magnetizing a magnetic material, ferromagnetic material, there are two possible ways. We can actually, because the dipole moments may be aligned, uh, dipole moments may be aligned uh, in different or random direction. So we can either uh, change the 
size of the domain such that the unfavorable domains there will be reduction in the unfavorable size of the unfavorable moments such that unfavorable domains such that the dipole moments will be taken out from the uh, domains unfavorable or uh, opposite domains to the domains which is aligned along the direction of the applied thin otherwise we can align or the domains can be rotated such that they can be aligned along the direction of the applied thin the domain wall movement or the or uh, increasing the domain size just by moving the uh, let's say taking out the dipole moments from one or uh, unfavorable domain to another that happens by domain wall movement if you consider uh, the okay this picture of mill wall let's say once we move the domain wall that means the this line or this part okay this part of the domain wall where there is no let's say we have applied one apply, applied field towards the positive y direction so that means we need to move the domain wall and we can move the domain wall that means the more and more the the same nature of the dipoles inside the domain wall would remain same however the one dipole from the right hand side would be taken inside the domain wall and the one dipole from the domain wall at the left hand side would be provided supplied to the domain on the left hand side so this way domain wall movement would happen so this domain wall movement actually requires lesser amount of energy magnetic energy compared to the domain rotation moreover a lower value of fields the domain wall movement is reversible that means once you remove the externally applied field we can the domain walls actually once again uh, reverse their position and they return to their actual position and uh, magnetic material may become unmagnetized or ferromagnetic material may become unmagnetized not only that uh, we require uh, even if there are some sort of spontaneous magnetization or they are, they are magnetized so they can be easily demagnetized or uh, the magnetized magnetic direction can be easily reversed now moreover usually this domain wall movement for a small value is linear so this part shown at the left uh, bottom part of the magnetic mag magnetization versus magnetic field uh, behavior characteristics is called the reversible domain wall movement where the magnetic uh, the field magnetic field applied magnetic field is lower and the, this characteristics is more or less linear and this can be easily reversible that's why this is called reversible magnetic field or reversible domain wall motion movement next part where the magnetic field increases and there are jumps or i would say discontinuous movement of the domain wall that move the domain wall moves by a longer uh, length so that part is irreversible irreversibility usually happens if there is in some sort of impurity that because the domain wall the, the domains not being homogeneous the domain wall need to move over the impurity which requires higher energy so we need to provide <coughs> higher energy to irreversible to uh, i would say reverse the domain wall movement which require higher energy finally at the top of the mid uh, characteristics which is usually provided or which will generated by the rotation of the domain walls is near the saturation point so that is completely irreversible <coughs> okay now the top figure once again in this slide shows the uh, magnetization here the domain wall external applied field is it uh, okay the field is applied along let's say the positive x direction Field is applied in along the positive x direction. So due to that, for the for no field, you see there the field along the x direction is zero, or the resultant magnetic field along the x axis the positive x direction is zero. Now, if we apply the applied field is weak, in that case, there are a small number of domains which are taken from the upper half to the lower half, and here to the lower from the lower half to the upper half, such that the lower left hand lower, lower part of the left hand side that 
increases size of that increases and here the upper part of the right hand side that part increases for that domain increase size increases now for strong applied field more number of dipolements should be taken out not only that the size of the middle domain also reduces so that the by domain wall movement those uh, the dipolements from those domains should be taken away such that the size of this domain and this domain increases So now, in this reversible part, actually there is no hysteresis effect. That means uh, this part being almost linear. If we want to demagnetize or magnetize in other direction, that there will be no change of the similar amount of magnetic field has to be provided. However, once we move to an irreversible part, we have to apply some different magnetic field. to reverse the magnetic process or magnetization process and there becomes there comes the hysteresis part okay so in polycrystalline material where there will be because the solid materials uh, remain in magnetar in crystalline form so crystal boundaries act as an obstacle so once we need to move beyond the crystal boundaries so that they form some sort of Uh, reversible nature or provide some sort of irreversible nature now depending upon the structure or different nature of the applied field versus the magnetization characteristics we can have different sort of bh curve so here there is no threshold for the applied field single threshold for the applied field suddenly this part or uh, this magnetic material has started getting magnetized here uh, when the magnetic material is highly perfect so there is no obstacle so here most of the material most part of the magnetization is linear or i would say um, there is one that when that is applied in easy direction so that would be mass uh, suddenly start moving the domain should be st suddenly start domain would suddenly start moving to give rise of this sort of steep b versus h characteristics if there is any uneasy magnetic direction or there may be some sort of impurity that magnetic field or bh curve can look like the lower characteristics starting from the uh, blue characteristics as the impurity increases or let's say the impedance to the not impedance in the electrical sense impedance to the magnetization increases there may be the such sort of shearing effect such that the magnetic uh, uh, bh curve actually shears a bit or the bits bend down to form the Uh, to show you show the red characteristics now we can have some sort of control to the coercive force hopefully i don't have to discuss about the coercive force and remnant and magnetic field over the bh curve so we can uh, because we for electrical engineer this these two values are important coercive force tells us how how much field or how difficult or how easy it would be to demagnetize a material For a permanent magnetic magnetic material, we don't require, or we would require that the coercive force should be as high as possible, such that it cannot be magnetized demagnetized easily. For uh, electromagnet, this value should be as small as possible, such that we can demagnetize or magnetize magnetize in different direction very easily. However, for in any case, for permanent magnetic material, the remnant magnetic fields that should be as high as possible in electromagnet although this has importance however because we are actually magnetizing in different direction so the saturation magnetic field or the maximum magnetic field we can get by applying the magnetic field, externally applied field that would become that would be more important coercive force and magnetic uh, remnant magnetic flux that could depend upon the impurities internal strains all those things okay so Mm. saturation magnetic flux density however depends upon the chemi chemical constitution or chemical uh, property of the material that as no, we cannot change chemical property means the uh, we cannot in apply some sort of impurity which does not change the chemical property of the material so the, thereby we cannot change the coercive force easily however we, by applying uh, changing the we have to change the chemical proper composition to change the saturation flux 
now this is known to you the area of the bh uh, inside the bh curve is the equals to the work or energy necessary to change or the reverse the direction of the magnetization here also we have the same property of the thermal agitation inside the domains of course we have that uh, thermal agitation of the ferromagnetic domain uh, sorry ferromagnetic uh, dipole dipole moments so theoretically at absolute zero they are the, the domain should be uh, perfectly at all the um, dipole moments inside the domain would be perfectly aligned and the domains also should be perfectly aligned however this does not happen as the temperature increases the domain starts once again behaving differently so such that the, the, their alignment bec may become random so depending upon that we can plot this characteristic same versus uh, m saturation with respect to t versus t saturation both so both direction or both of them are normalized so as the temperature increases you see normalized means we, uh, the magnetic uh, saturation magnetization is normalized and also the temperature is also normalized so as the temperature increases the saturation magnetized decreases and at the cool temperature the saturation magnetized magnetization becomes almost zero so that is all for today uh, if you have any question you can ask me any question swastik ei slide ta ami already pathiye diyechi ठीक थैंक यू